Hi, this is Dr. Campbell, and today I wanted to talk about how can teachers eliminate the race factor in school discipline. Now, in a recent article, an Indiana college professor provided local Pittsburgh educators and residents with the alleged primary reasons that racism continues to contribute to school discipline. According to John Roberts, and this is a quote, the way to stop discrimination on the basis of race is to stop discriminating on the basis of race. End of quote. Educators can benefit from an evaluation of the differences in verbal and nonverbal behavior that provides the platform for developing trust, which ultimately has an impact on the perceived fairness related to school discipline. Now, according to the article, which is titled Expert Race Still a Factor in School Discipline, over 100 students, teachers, administrators, and advocates gathered to hear Russell Skiba, a professor in the Department of Counseling and Educational Psychology at Indiana University Bloomington in Bloomington, Indiana, to lecture about the reasons that racism continues to plague the American educational system. According to Mr. Skiba, and this is a quote, we've been disabused of the notion that someone we've gotten some, somehow we've gotten past the issues of race in America and that we would be race neutral in dealing with these issues in America, end quote. He went on to say that, quote, the history of race relations within the United States includes centuries of slavery and landmark cases that have a lasting psychological effect and help create hidden racism. All of this hangover of history sticks with us. It's what we believed and have been taught for centuries, and we can't stop believing it overnight. End of quote. Now, Linda Lane, the Pittsburgh Public School Superintendent, reported that the historical context was the, and this is a quote, biggest takeaway, end of quote, from the lecture. Lane believes that, quote, it's a matter of having those conversations about race and not pretending that race doesn't matter. We all know color blindness doesn't work, and we as educators need to recognize our own implicit biases so we can address them, end of quote. And so my first question is, what is the beginning factor that leads to enforcing discipline on the platform of racism? You see, education is a communication process that is not limited to transmitting knowledge, but also involves interpersonal communication behaviors and nonverbal behaviors that are the major aspects of interpersonal relationships, which are critical in all learning situations. The teaching learning process is essentially a communication event that includes verbal and nonverbal communication. Teachers and students are verbal and nonverbal message senders and receivers. Developing respectful relationships with students requires considerable knowledge of their verbal and nonverbal communication styles. Schools and black student conflict develop from expectation differences related to communication styles. The general public fails to accept that blacks have different communication norms and conventions by assuming that blacks communicate using standards set by socially dominant whites. White's dispassionate and detached communication mode creates distrust amongst blacks due to its similarity to blacks who front, which occurs when blacks perceive there is a communication risk factor and chooses to remain silent 
in black-white communication encounters. Most black educational failure arises from teachers' inability to understand how the students communicate. And so my next question is, how should Pittsburgh schools plan to overcome racism that can lead to unnecessary school discipline? The Pittsburgh superintendent plans a follow-up action meeting to the lecture which was held in the Woodland Hills High School Library. An action plan is a document that lists what steps must be taken in order to achieve a specific goal. The purpose of an action plan is to clarify what resources are required to reach the goal, formulate a timeline for when specific tasks need to be completed and determine what resources are required. There are several problems with an action plan development if the correct steps are not followed. The first problem is that without the appropriate process, the action plan is paramount to shoving a plan down the throat of those responsible for implementation. Doesn't work. The second problem arises when teachers are provided an opportunity to exhibit characteristics associated with a dysfunctional organization. This will eventually thwart any efforts to eliminate school discipline associated with racism. The Pittsburgh superintendent should utilize the following steps to ensure the best process for eliminating school discipline that is associated with racism. First of all, select the correct connectors in the school district or in the school and local community advocates to participate in your group. I would limit this group to 25 to 30 members. Secondly, Retrieve and provide the necessary information to ensure the success of this transition. The third step, develop a shared vision within the group. This normally takes about three sessions and this will eliminate the characteristics associated with a dysfunctional organization. And finally, then you want to develop the appropriate goals, objectives, timelines, and costs. Normally about four session process. Approximately, it would take about 11 short sessions to ensure the most effective process and plan of action, action to eliminate school discipline associated with racism. This is Dr. Campbell. You can read about this article as well as additional information on our website at www.positiveracialrelationships.com. If you want to talk about it, you can call me on my direct line, 856-566-3267. Have a great day, and thank you very much.